Good evening. It's great to be here. A bit nervous, but really good to be here. So, what I hope to do today is to tell you a, a small story, a short story, and it's about our future as seen through the eyes of young children, especially the young children of South County Dublin. So, one of the things that we know about the future is that it will be technological. We know it will be advanced. We also know we have a feel for the fact that technology is advancing at an ever-increasing rate. Now, you would think, being an engineer and talking to students about the future of engineering and technology, that I'd be quite comfortable with this concept of the future, the technological future. However, um, one of the things that I am struck by is just how fast technology is moving. So I will talk to students all the time about their role in the future uh, as a professional engineer. Um, but I am truly afraid of just how fast it moves. When I first went into, co uh, into the college or at university, computers were just arriving. Now we have computing devices nearly everywhere, and you can access the internet almost anywhere that you are through your handheld devices. Now, one of the other things that I do as part of my, my job, my career, is to try to encourage young children to take up a career in STEM. So, one of the things I have to do as part of that is to read uh, reports that talk about why children choose STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematical disciplines. And again, one of the things that strikes a little bit of fear into my heart is when you read reports that say that depending on where a child uh, lives, so their geographical location, depending on their sex, whether they're male or female, depending on the, if you like, the skills, the, the interest in STEM around them, has a massive impact on whether they will actually choose the STEM disciplines. So, one of the things that these reports found is that science capital, um, if you like, the science interest, the knowledge, the skills that surround a child has a massive influence upon whether they will choose a, a future career in STEM. Now, also slightly worrying is that children are making that decision to follow a STEM career very, very early. Um, so, if a child has chosen, or in a high science capital um, family, and they choose STEM um, by the age of about 10, they will generally tend to persist with that decision. Uh, if they choose non-STEM, they will also tend to persist in that decision. The worrying thing is that if a child from a low science capital um, family does not choose by the age of 10, then they choose a STEM discipline by the age of 10, they're unlikely then to choose a career in STEM. So it's incredibly difficult to change their minds once they start to enter the junior and leaving cert cycle. If we bring this a little bit more local, um, in 2016, of the students who took the leaving, leaving cert, 56% of those progressed onto third level. Now, that doesn't mean only 56%. Some of them went to the UK or other countries. Some of them didn't quite pass and had to go back and, and retake some subjects. That number, that base number, hides a huge diversity in progression to third level. Now, let's bring that even more local. So we look around South County Dublin. If you look at the, now I'm going to call them more affluent, that may not be the case in all circumstances, but the more affluent regions in Dublin, you will see massive progression rates to university, 80, 90% and more. If you then come a little bit closer to South County Dublin, the areas within and around South County Dublin, those rates fall to 40 to 50%. Now, that really scares me, because we need huge numbers of students doing, uh, choosing STEM disciplines in order to sustain our technological future. So what we need is a method, a way, an initiative that allows us to try and attract students to the STEM disciplines that uses something that every child has, and that is their innate curiosity. Okay? So, I am really lucky. I work with a really committed team of people that we put together over the last year. So obviously Institute of Technology Teller, where I work, but also uh, Teller Library, which is part of the South uh, County Dublin uh, Library Network. You've got Faroga, and you've got Project 42. Now Niall's going um, to speak later about Project 42, a really interesting in initiative developed in the UK that is showing real promise in helping students, and especially girls, to choose the STEM disciplines.
Now, we were funded by Science Foundation Ireland. And again, that was really important to validate the kinds of things that we were saying, because Science Foundation came along and said, yes, we believe in this team. We're going to give you money to try and prove this out, to test that as a feasibility. Now, over the last nine months, I have been really um, lucky to work with groups of people from the different um, uh, groups. So what we've done is we've put together at the moment a package of initiatives that we've used over those months to try and encourage more and more students and more and more girls uh, to try and take up STEM, and especially in the more disadvantaged areas of South County Dublin. The very first thing that we did is we knew that both Faroga and the libraries were really active in the way that they were trying to encourage students into STEM, and especially in areas of Clondorkin. Clondorkin. Um, so one of the first things we wanted to do was to support the work they were doing by putting things like 3D printers, um, kind of rearranging their digital learning space so that, that could, they, we could support the work that they were doing uh, in that. So in that space, we put the 3D printers. We were kind of using those during the summer for the camps and the various other activities that we, that we did over the last nine months. We also did, I think this was one of the first events we did, something called the Design Academy. Now, that name has only recently come to be applied to that method. But what we did is we bought um, uh, companies, people from uh, companies from the Dublin region. We had IKEA and a guy called Rory Morahan, who is from a chef in the Chops group, so the, the healthy restaurants that, um, in, the, in the square and other areas. And what we did is we were taking everyday engineering problems and we were and societal problems and we were putting them up to the children and saying, what do you think the solution to this is? Now, as part of that, what we got them to do is to design small little water gardens where you could grow um, uh, mint and other herbs and lettuce in the kitchen at home. So you would reduce, in theory, food waste. But they got to think about things like sustainable uh, approaches and how they can be better at not throwing out food at home. So it was a really interesting way of looking at the problem through their eyes. The Project 40 Camps, po Project 42 Camps, I'm not going to say much about because Niall obviously is going to talk about those later. But this was a really, a kind of really bringing together a really enthusiastic group of company representatives, including uh, Niall from Transdev, uh, who's a really good friend of ours, to come and talk to the students about, if you like, issues within society, everyday issues within society, and then to ask the students or the kids to use design thinking, which is a new approach from the US, to try and tackle those problems using their curiosity, their imagination, and then getting to show us and their parents exactly what they think the future solutions are. It was a really, really good experience during the summer. The other thing I am incredibly proud to do is to work more closely with some of the other groups. So one of the things that I'm doing with Barbara, where's Barbara? Wave. There you are. Hi, Barbara. Um, from Teller Library is to try and take 3D printing, primary research, and try and build, if you like, reality backstories behind children's literature. So we're using a number of books, include The Guns of Easter. We're using, um, there's a picture book by um, Ryan Tuberty on the visit of uh, President Kennedy to Ireland. Um, there are other, other books. I can't remember the other books. So, but there are other books as well. And what we do is we build boxes, curiosity boxes, of 3D images of uh, re primary research, backstories behind all of these things. And then we immerse the students, uh, the children, in that story behind the book, if you like. And what we're finding is that it is an incredible way of getting students interested in both literacy and technology almost at the same time. And you can apply it to almost any area of technology, science, literature. It is a really interesting approach to using technology in that way. I'm really pr proud of that one. And then the last thing that we're doing is we're trying to design games that we can take out to um, schools so that we can try and get these approaches out in, in kind of hit wider audiences. Because, of course, while we do camps that have 12, 15, 20 students in them, that's still only a tiny fraction of the children we need to reach in order to build the science capital of South County Dublin and then the rest of Ireland. So one of the things I'd just like to leave you with before I finish up is we know the future will be technological. We know it will be advanced. Many of the problems that we will face, we have absolutely no idea what they are. But one of the things I am no longer afraid about is what will happen in the future. Because if you look at these issues through the eyes of the children, especially the children of South County Dublin, you find that that future is safe, that they will protect that future, develop that future. So I'm no longer afraid. Thank you. Thank you.